after understanding the equilibrium of a firm now we can understand this phenomenon of equilibrium in the long run and in the long run it gives rise to a certain diagram which is known as the expansion path and we will see why we call it expansion path so it's about the long run analysis and in the long run analysis we know that all of the factors of production they are allowed to vary so it means that we will allow v1 and v2 both to vary and when both of them or all of them vary it means that the scale is changing the scale of production will be now different and as a result of the long run and the ability of v1 and v2 to change together we will have not just one equilibrium instead we will be having multiple equilibria and the locus of these multiple equilibria will give us the expansion path because the um, locus of these equilibria actually shows that how in the long run the firm is able to produce more when it increases both that is v1 and v2 both of the factors of production so rightly we call it expansion path the path on which we can observe the expansion of the firm's production in the long run now we have uh, to assume that p1 and p2 they are constant it will up, up give us some stability in the um, isocost line otherwise the slope of the isocost line will change which will become something difficult for us to handle in this diagram where already multiple equilibria are to be plotted so for the sake of convenience we have assumed that p1 and p2 they have the fixed slopes now the production function is also assumed to be homothetic because this is a desirable feature of a production function because we have to consider various shifts in it and during these shifts we wish that the pattern is kept and the pattern is not lost the properties they are the same no matter we talk about the first isoquant or the second one or the third one so with these assumptions we can say that the cost function will be something like this that is with the minimum levels that is 1 2 and 3 respectively for their own isoquants these will be the minimum levels of cost the function will look like this that is total cost is a function of the output and the input prices that is p1 and p2 and uh, they are considered to be multiplicative separable because you can see that there is a multiplication in between these two terms that is the term based on the output and the term based on the input prices and they are separable through the multiplication they are written in this way where we can separate them if needed now the isocost function are homogeneous of degree 1 this is another feature that we need to observe here that the uh, degree of homogeneity of the isocost function is 1 we can check this simply by doing this introduction of lambda in the variables that we have in the isocost line there are uh, p1 and p2 so we introduce lambda here and lambda if introduced on left hand side which is just a scalar just a constant value uh, should be introduced on the right hand side as well so with this p1 we are writing lambda and with this p2 we are writing lambda now we take lambda as a common factor on the right hand side and the remaining term is actually the same isocost line that we started our analysis with so it means that now it is being multiplied it, it is uh, a multiple of it and when we focus on the power of lambda it is 1 so it means that it is homogeneous of degree 1 homogeneous in the sense that if we introduce a scalar some constant value in this function of isocost line it will uh, allow it to be factored out and as you can see lambda is totally factored out and we are left with the original function well when we focus on the power of lambda it is 1 so it means that it is homogeneous but the degree of homogeneity is 1 now we can focus on the uh, diagram of the expansion path this is the first equilibrium and then there is a second equilibrium third equilibrium and in the long run it is happening where v2 and v1 both of them are allowed to vary 
so once we have these three points or more than three points we can join them as you can see we are starting the ray from zero that is the origin and we are uh, uh, passing it through the various equilibria that we have and this ray actually is called as the expansion path because it guides us about the expansion of the output of the firm in the long run so this was the concept of expansion path in production economics Thank you.